All right, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone. This is Malio's Coffee Break for Friday, July 28th. I sound like the news. Um, today, we're going to talk about storage. Uh, and I'm going to try to cover all the areas of storage that people are the most interested in. Uh, of course, as questions come up, feel free to try them in the chat. Uh, we'll do a Q&A session at the end where uh, you can open your mic and ask questions live. I'm going to mostly focus on things that uh, when we are helping people in the support team, we notice they struggle with uh, and where the root cause of the problem tends to be a storage issue, a storage consideration. And I'm not as organized as Angela, so I don't have a slide deck to present to you. But for those of you that don't know me, I'm JC Figueroa. I am the customer success lead at Malio. I manage the support team and I collaborate with both the marketing and the documentation departments in making sure that uh, everything is documented and that people have access to both self-help via documentation and they can access the support team. I have a great team of people that are always there to assist. So that's my background in Malio. Besides that, I'm an underwater photographer. I've been working in the media industry in one way or another for the past <clears throat> years. Uh, and that's who I am. Uh, lots of experience, both behind, in front, and the, of the camera, and then in the post-production work for both video and audio. So Let's talk about storage. Oh, and joining us from Mali also is Laurie Rubin. Laurie is one of our marketing experts, and she's one of the ambassadors for the brand. Um, you've seen her do a lot of our webinars. She'll be helping with questions while we're talking. Uh, while I'm talking, she'll be help, helping with questions uh, on the chat. And thank you, Michael, for the congrats. All right, so let's get started. Storage. So the first thing that I want to say about storage is that every device that you put in your Malio account is going to require storage. And every device in your Malio account has something that we call the Malio system folder. So I'm going to uh, share my screen here. And I'm going to show you what the Malio system folder looks like for this particular machine that I'm in. So very quickly, I'm going to give you a glance at my devices. I have a Mac Studio. That's the machine that we're on right now. And then I have a number of other devices. Every single one of these devices has to have its own Malio system folder. So what does that look like? Well, on the Mac Studio, if I switch here to the Finder and I go to my home directory, JCF, <clears throat> I'm going to find a folder called Malio. That is what we call the Malio system folder. And every single device has one. Your phone has one. You can't access it because in, uh, in phone devices, the file system is hidden. But there is a Malio system folder on your phone and on your iPad. Uh, on a Windows computer, it's in the same place in your home directory. For those of you not familiar with a home directory, uh, on a Mac, that's going to be on your internal hard drive. So if I go here to my Mac Studio, uh, Macintosh HD is the internal hard drive of that computer. And if I open that, you'll see that there's a folder called Users. And then there's my initials there for my user account. And if I open that, that's where I find the Malia folder. Um, on Windows, it's very similar. You go to your C drive. There's a folder called users, then there'll be your name or, or the name of the account, the computer account you're using. And within that folder, you'll find the Malio system folder. And the Malio system folder is where Malio is going to store a version of your entire library for that particular device. Now, in my case, if I split the screen here, I'm gonna open my Malio system folder right there. Uh, and then I'm gonna, split this screen over here and show you that for this particular device, my Mac Studio, I have set up my Mac to be Space Saver. What that means is that 
Malia is going to keep the only compressed versions of my photos in this device by default. And by that, I mean the thumbnails, which are compressed, are very small versions of my library. And it's going to keep as many of the optimized images as it can. So even though I have a bunch of folders here, most of these folders are pretty empty. They, they don't actually have a lot of photos in them. You know, like if I go here to uh, Galapagos for 2021, that folder is going to be mostly empty and it's only going to contain the XMP files. And if you don't know what XMP files are, remember that and ask me at the end of the session and I'll tell you about it. So my compressed images, the thumbnails and optimized versions of my photos are in my Malio system folder, but they're within a uh, directory or a special package called the generated images bundle. And you'll notice that my generated images bundle is the thing that's taking the most space in my Malio system folder for this particular computer, it's taking 34 gigabytes. Everything else is pretty empty. However, if I were to download an original, if I if I went to a folder, you know, I'm gonna go here to um, let's go to this test folder here, and I'm gonna go to this new camera folder and I'm going to say, hey, I have this photo of the squirrel. Um, it is photo 304. I want to find that in my Malio system folder outside of Malio. I go here to new camera testing. And if I scroll down to 304, there's going to be an XMP file for that photo, but the actual image is not there. However, if I say download original, Malio downloaded the original from some other place, and there is the full size file, which is 70 megabytes. Now, imagine if I did that for all of my photos, my Malio system folder would get pretty full. And because this is just the internal drive of my computer and it's not that large, it would fill up my computer. And this is an issue that a lot of people run into. They set up a Malio system folder. Their device is set up with a sync policy that requires too much media to be stored locally. And when that happens, your internal hard drive fills up. And when your internal hard drive fills up on your computer or on your phone or on any device, that can cause a lot of issues. Number one, Malio is going to stop syncing because it has no place to put the photos. Uh, even if it's not trying to put the photos locally, if it's trying to move the photos to a vault, if your internal storage is full, Mali is also going to stop working because the photos have to move through your internal storage before they make it to your vault. So for example, if my internal hard drive was full and I was trying to import a new set of photos from a photo shoot, Malia needs to bring those photos locally to my computer. It needs to generate an optimized image. It needs to generate a thumbnail. And then it moves everything to my vault. So if I have no internal storage available, everything either slows way down because Malia has to bring one photo in, finish the work, get rid of the, uh, move the files to the vault, get rid of the files so that it can bring another photo in. So it's constantly cycling through the little bit of storage that you have available internally in order to do all that work. So keeping plenty of internal space in your internal storage, or keeping plenty of space in your internal hard drive, in your internal storage, is a really, really good idea. So, so far so good. I hope everybody understands that the Malio system folder is something that every device has. So if I start going down the list here of devices and I look at my MacBook Pro, my MacBook Pro is also set up to be a space saver. So that computer is only keeping compressed versions in its internal storage. Uh, same with uh, some of my other devices. If I go here to my Motorola phone, that phone doesn't have a lot of space. It's only like a 64 gigabyte device, right? So the internal storage is very small. So that device, instead of having uh, a device sync policy for Space Saver, which is going to put the optimized versions of my image 
it only has the preset called catalog. And catalog is only going to keep the thumbnails. So catalog, the catalog preset is the smallest version of your library that you can have on any one device. And of course, my vaults, they all have everything. So if I go to my main media drive on Finder here, there's my main media drive. You notice that there's a Malio system folder. It's usually called Malio underscore with some numbers and letters. And all the same data that you see in your other systems folder is going to be there. The big difference in this case is that every single original file is in that folder. So you'll notice that not only do I have a generated images bundle that's about the same uh, amount of space, 30 some odd gigabytes, but all my other folders have the full version of my photos. If I go to uh, my Terps folder here, which is one of my biggest folder, every one of these folders has a lot of data in it, right? If I look here at Galapagos 2021, which I, I shot a lot of videos, that has 225 gigabytes in it because all the originals are in there. And that device, sync policy is set up as a vault. So every device needs to have space. And how you manage that space is determined by two things, the device sync policy, what version of your library you're going to keep on the internal storage of that device and the device storage itself. So I'm going to switch back here to my Mac Studio. We spend a lot of time in device sync policy. If you have any questions about it, we can discuss them at the end. But let me go down here at the bottom where it says device storage. And under device storage, there's a very important setting here called minimum free space. And what minimum free space means is you are telling Malio to leave alone, to not use a certain amount of space in your internal storage. So no matter what, in this computer, 224 gigabytes are never going to be used by Malio. So when the amount of free space in my internal drive reaches 224, Malia stops putting new things in that space. It just starts managing the cache. Now, if my library gets big enough that I need more space, it's going to stop syncing. And at that point, I either have to turn off auto manage and move this slider myself to something smaller, or I have to purge other things in my internal drive, things outside of Malio, so that I can free up more space so Malio is not infringing on the minimum free space, but still has enough space to bring in thumbnails or previous or whatever your setting might be. All right, so that's that's really the, the, the gist of it. That's the basis of everything. Couple of things you want to know. One is how big is my library, right? Well, you can go to a vault and look at the file system and tell, but you can also go here to library stats and click on file types, and you're going to see a summary of your um, of the size of your library, the size of your originals, right? So this is only determining the size of your original files. So for my library, it's about 1.2 terabytes. Uh, you add to that the optimized versions of your images. Optimized images tend to be between five and 10% the size of the full size file. So if you estimate conservatively, optimized images are going to be 10% the size of your full size library. So if I have a 1.2 terabyte library, my previews are going to take about uh, 120 gigabytes at the most. You'll notice in my case that is not true because most of my images are raw images and Malia does a really good job of generating optimized images from a raw file. It's much more efficient. So actually my optimized images are less than 5% the size because I'm mostly shooting raw. But if you're starting with, or you shoot mostly in JPEG, then there's not a lot that Malia can do to compress that image further. So those files are gonna be slightly larger. 10% is a very conservative, very good estimate to use. For thumbnails, 1%. So 
12 gigabytes is what the size of my thumbnails is going to be on my uh, overall library. And again, that's super conservative. The other thing that takes space in your internal storage is the database of your library itself. Uh, and that's not something that you typically see is stored somewhere else. Um, I will show you. It's stored in that uh, on your home directory as a hidden file um, under your library. But to estimate to estimate the size of your database, just calculate about 750 megabytes for every 100,000 100, photos. So <clears throat> even if you have 2 million photos, you're still only talking about 10, 15 gigabytes total. So it doesn't take a lot of room. All right. So that's it. That's storage. That's what you need to know. That's what you want to be aware of. And the most important thing that I can tell you is uh, more is more when it comes to storage. Uh, storage is cheap. Uh, buy the fastest, largest storage that you can afford. Uh, if you can afford to buy an SSD drive instead of a magnetic spinning drive, uh, you're going to see much better performance. When you go to buy a new computer, if you are looking at the specs of that computer, I recommend that people don't go with the stock. Like if you go to buy most Apple computers today, most laptops, the default, the default hard drive is like 256 gigabyte. That is not enough space. You should go with at least 500. If you can afford to go to one terabyte internal, it's going to make a huge difference because Apple puts really nice, very fast internal storage on their devices. And if you have uh, enough of it, everything that you do with Malio and with any other application that involves photography is going to go much faster. Your life is going to be much easier. Um, same with external storage. If your library is 1.2 terabytes, double or triple or quadruple that when you go to purchase a new vault. So every time I go to set up a new vault now, I don't do anything less than four terabytes because I know my library is going to continue to grow. I'm starting to shoot more video than stills. I have a granddaughter coming, so I'm going to be taking a lot of photos of her. So plan to have plenty of space to grow into. Um, and always, always, always keep an eye on the internal storage of your devices so that you're not exceeding that minimum free space that you have set. And you know the auto manage button is pretty good, but you can always turn that off and set something that makes more sense to you. But uh, I'll tell you, a lot of the tickets that we get the first thing that we look at is how full is their hard drive? How much minimum free space have they said? And very often we see a device where the minimum free space is set to uh, 20 gigabytes, for example, but the amount of space left in the device is like 15 or 20 or 15 or 10. So obviously Malio cannot continue syncing. They see that their files are not moving. They're like, hey, Malio is broken. And the answer is no, Malio is just respecting the settings and not uh, using up the space that we told it not to use. So you, you need to free up space on your device. All right. So Lori, how are we doing on questions? Things uh, that good. we should address? We have a couple questions I would love to have you address, um, starting with Lou, who's asking, does Malio tell you when you're out of space? Yes, Malio will give you a notification that uh, you're approaching the minimum free space and that will come up uh, that will pop up on the screen you will also see it if you go to your notifications here it'll show up uh, as an alert it'll be red and it'll say minimum free space being uh you you've reached the minimum free space or, or you're getting close to we are actually planning to make that a lot more annoying and in your face because uh, people sometimes don't see that and one of the things that we are planning as well is to not just tell you that you're out of space, but to tell you what you can do about it, which is 
one of two things. If you're out of space uh, on a device that is not designated to be a vault, the first thing that you can do is just change the device sync policy to something else, right? So here I am on Space Saver, which means Mali is going to bring all of my optimized images. They tend to be much bigger than my thumbnails. So one thing that I could do on this device if it was running out of space is switch it to catalog. Um, and once I switch it, in order to free up that space, I would have to tell Malia to clear the cache. And for those of you not familiar with clear cache, what clear cache does is it looks at files that might be in that internal storage that you don't really need because the device policy and uh, other parameters determine that those files are elsewhere. So like in the case of this device, I have it set up to space savers. So it's not going to try to get rid of any optimized. So it's telling me you have zero optimized images that you can delete, but I do have 26 original files that I could delete. And if I click yes on here, it would not have those files in the internal storage and it would free up the space that it's being used. Uh, if I change this to catalog, you'll see a huge difference when I run clear cache. Well, this number should be much larger. So something's not right, but I'm often running beta versions of the software. So let's not go down that rabbit hole too much. But anyway, that's where you go clear that cache to free up more space after you change the device sync policy. And the other thing that you can do is um, go free up space outside of Milio. And both Macintosh and Windows have good um, tools to help you free up space. On the Mac, you go here to uh, About This Mac and click More Info. And that's going to open up a bunch of things in here. One of the things that you can click is uh, Storage Settings. And that will give you a lot of information about how the internal drive on your computer is being utilized and help you uh, show you what's using the most space and help you clean up some things that you might not be using. Uh, Windows has something similar as well. All right, what other questions do we have? Okay, uh, Lou's asking, what happens to items on your device when you change the sync type? For example, if you started with full-size images, go to optimize, uh, do mm -hmm. the existing photos change size? Right, so those items uh, are gonna get put in the trash or the recycle bin of that particular device, but only if that version is safely stored somewhere else. So like, you know, if my Mac Studio was my only device and I set it to Space Saver, it's still gonna have the originals because there's no other place to put it. The moment I add a vault, and my originals are safely stored in that vault, Malia will then look at the internal storage. And if it's getting close or it's it has reached the minimum free space threshold, then it'll start purging original files because they're in the vault uh, and it'll put them in the recycling bin. So it won't delete them. Malia does not delete things by default. It always puts them in the uh, recycle or trash can, depending on the operating system. Uh, of course, on an iOS device or on an Android device, it does delete them right away because there's no access to the file system. What else we got? Oh, okay. Uh, let's see here. We've got Harold asking, can you comment on your vault and folders versus library? Mm, say that one more time. Can I Okay, comment? it says, uh, sorry. Um, can you comment on your vault and folders versus library? Okay, so who, who asked the question? This is Harold. Harold, can you clarify what you mean? You can turn on yes. your mic. No, when, when for instance, if you if you your vault has the option of sort of being its own device, mm -hmm. you can take that folder and say add it to the Mylio library so that it shows up in the top tier of my Are you talking about link folders? Yes. Yes, yes, um, absolutely right. So a link folder um, is connected to a particular device. So like if um, my Mac Studio, if I had a folder in my Mac Studio that I wanted to link and that folder was somewhere in my internal storage, I would link that folder and then I would um, 
see those photos as part of the library, that folder would not be moved to the Malio system folder in that device. But on my other devices, it would show up within the Malio system folder. I'll show you an example here. If I go here to my uh, main media, to my vault, you'll notice that uh, even though in Malio I have uh, a trips folder, for example, right? And it shows at the top level. When I originally added that folder to Malio, it was part of my Mac Studio. So that folder in my, in the main media Malio system folder, the trips folder is associated with the Mac Studio because that was the device from which it was originally linked. I then changed it to a Malio library folder. So I changed the relationship, but it's still associated with it. So this is what you're going to see on, on the device that the folder is linked from. You won't see that folder inside the Malia folder. It'll be where, where it was. Malia keeps it in place. But on your other devices, like on your vaults, you'll see it in a subfolder associated with that particular device. Did that make sense or did I just completely confuse you? Yeah, no, for instance, the, the, the photographs that you have on your vault, Mm -hmm. Where do they where do they show up in the in the first Milio screen? Does it, it show up as folders on the device, or, uh, they, or have well, you moved it to the the Milio library? So within Milio, you're talking about within Milio, yes. the application. So within Milio photos, those show, those photos are going to show up in every view. So this photo right here of me. Uh, with a bum gumball machine, that photo, if I look at the information of that photo, it's actually came from my phone. It's a photo that I took with my phone and it is stored in the Apple Photos folder under the subfolder called JC iPhone library. But I can find that photo on every view in Malio. It's in my all photos view. If I go to the calendar and I go to the day that photo was taken, which was last Sunday, I believe, uh, that photo is going to be right there in the calendar view. If I go to the map view, that photo is going to be found in Seattle where the photo was taken. So every photo shows up in all the different views in Malio, including the folder view. In this case, that photo is part of my Apple photos, is part of my iPhone library. And if I go to the iPhone library, there is that photo. So it depends what view you're looking at in the Malio interface. No, but, but in the file well, system, it's only going to be in that folder. No, what I'm saying, if you go to the top folders view, if you if you double click folders, mm -hmm. do you see your do you see your vault? You will only see your vault listed on the top level view if you have linked a folder to that device. But that's okay. And that's perfectly okay. It represents where that folder came from. Okay. No, that like, for example, if I added, let's say that I go here and I uh say I, I want to add a folder that is on my external drive. There's this folder here called uh, images to clean up. That's a folder that exists in that hard drive in, in my vault, but it's not part of my Malia library, it's outside of it. If I go ahead and I link that folder, it's going to bring those photos in. And I have no idea what photos are in there, so I'm not going to go into it. But notice that the first thing it does is says, OK, you now have a folder associated with this vault called main media. It's called images to clean up. And it is right here. There's 20 photos and nine subfolders within it. OK. Does that you, make sense? Yes. but then. If you wanted to, you could add that, make it part of the library. There's an option. Yes, to make yes, it. absolutely. You can go into the dashboard and you can go to that device and to the link folders for that device and say, hey, this is this is part of main media. It's associated with main media. I want to mark it as a library folder. And if I do that, instead of showing up with that breakdown here, it would show up up here with the rest of the other folders. Now, when that happens, mm -hmm. does, that, does that, do those photographs get added to the main 
uh, Malio Library. They the the they will they will go inside the Malio folder. The number the numbered Malio file. Folder. Correct. Yes. Got it. Uh, on 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 your other vaults, not on the originating vault, but on your other vaults, they will. That's that's what I wanted to know. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. And let's take that out of my library before I forget. <laughs> All right, wait, Di what else we got? Okay, Diane's asking if you could talk a little bit about how you use Dropbox and Backblaze. Um, well, I don't use Dropbox in association with Malio in any way. The only thing that I would ever do related to Dropbox is either download photos from Dropbox locally and then import them into Malio, or I would export photos out of Malio and then put them up on Dropbox. But the way Dropbox works, Dropbox is its own synchronization system. And if you have two synchronization systems working on the same folder structure, you're bound to create problems. So a good way to lose photos or to create a mess is to have a Dropbox folder linked to Malio. So don't do that. Um, but if you have photos in Dropbox that you want to be part of your Malio library, download those photos locally. Uh, and then do an import into Malio. And if you want to put photos up in Dropbox, which I do all the time, I export them directly to a Dropbox folder and then they just show up. Like my daughter is constantly asking me for photos of this or that. Hey, do you have a photo of me when I was 10? And I just go find a photo. She has her own folder designated in Dropbox that she knows to look for. So I just do an export and I'll show you here. I can just... Um, Let's find some photos of my daughter. So I'll go here to my people view. I'll scroll down to the letter M for Madeline. Forget how the alphabet works sometimes. There's Madeline, so I'll go. So photos when she was 10. So that would have been in 2005. So I scroll really fast to 2005. Here we go. Let's find a cute photo of Madeline. There's one. So I could just export that as a JPEG, and I can go and put it directly into a Dropbox folder uh, if I so choose. Uh, let's see. Let's do nice Dropbox not showing up. There it is. So I could go put it in the uh, public and I have a folder for Madeline. So I would save it right there. Um, and that photo would then be in Dropbox and my daughter could see it. That's the only way that I use Dropbox. Now Backblaze, uh, we can definitely add Backblaze as a storage device in Malio. So Backblaze can become another device in Malio, but it's only a repository for your photos, it's not going to read anything you have in Malio, right? So the way Malio interfaces with cloud devices is that it makes them a place to save your photos too. Uh, and I actually have Backblaze set up. Uh, it's just set up as a vault. So if you look at the devising policy, it's a vault. So anything and everything that I put in Malio goes to Backblaze and it's specifically the Backblaze B2 service. And if you go to our manual, there is a specific section in the manual that shows you how to add Backblaze B2 as a Malio uh, repository for your photos. All right, next question. Okay, so I was hoping that Lou would open up their mic. Um, they seemed a little bit confused still about when you're changing sync policies and if the images will change. Okay, um, I, I'll try oh. to, uh, to explain Perfect. my uh, question. <laughs> Um, when I first, oh, I'm listening. When I first set up my Leo, I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And on my computer, on my hard drive, apparently I had first set it up for the full images and then realized, well, that's not going to work. So I changed the sync then to the optimized. And from what I heard you say, then those first images, the full size images would end up being put into the uh, uh, recycle bin? They'll be put in the recycle bin only 
if and when you have another device that stores your originals. Okay, Mavi I will never, ever, ever delete your original files. Okay, I do have them in a vault, but does that mean then I can't see them on my computer? You can. So if I go to if I go to my computer uh, and I go to any photo, right? So I go to this photo with the two bears. Right now, I'm looking at the preview image because that's the optimized image is what's stored locally. If I wanted to bring the original, I can just say download original. If I go to do something with that image that requires the original, like if I wanted to edit this on a different application, for example, say I say uh, I want to uh, I want to edit this with uh, photo AI with Topaz photo AI. Mali is going to say, okay, you want to edit a copy or the original? If I say edit the original, the first thing Mali is going to do is it's going to download that original locally to my internal drive, and then it's going to open it in Photo AI, and then it'll let me do whatever work I want to do. So Mali is smart enough to know, oh, the original is not on this device. It's over there on the hard drive. Uh, right now, she doesn't need the original, but if you try to export or edit that image, or do any kind of work that requires the original, Malia will go and get it. Uh, and if I, for example, let me quit photo AI here. Let's say that I didn't have any originals. Uh, well, that's not going to work because Backblaze is only connected. But if I don't have a vault available, like say you unplug your hard drive uh, and you were just working on your computer without that hard drive plugged in, and you tried to do something that required the original, Mali is going to say, hey, I don't have the original. Can you please bring this device online? And it'll tell you the name of the device so that I can get the original. So this is how Malia works. Like my um, Android phone, for example, it only has thumbnails. So when I'm looking at photos in that device, if I open up a photo, I only have the thumbnail, but what Malia does right away is that if it sees I only have a thumbnail, it goes, okay, what other device is nearby that I can access that has a better version of this photo? And I'll automatically bring an optimized version so that I get a better experience. And that is the beauty of Malia. You don't have to have all your originals or all your even all your optimized images locally but when you go to interact with an image, Mali will try to provide you a better version of that photo by reaching to another device and bringing it here locally. And then when it's done with that, it clears that space in your drive. Did, did that help, Lou, or did <laughs> I confuse you further? Well, a little bit. When I look at uh, a device where I change the sync, mm -hmm. it'll have like, the uh, original and the optimized, and it looks like there are still some things in the original because there's still a filled in line. Oh, you're talking about the sync panel. Yeah, I think that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so the sync panel will show you so. Right, right, right. Right, so let's go here to the sync panel and talk about the sync panel a little bit because that's something that confuses people a lot. So if I go here to my sync panel, this is telling me, actually, Lou, if, if I may, I'm going to show you uh, a visual aid first, uh, just so people understand what previous thumbnails and originals look like. This is an original of a photo, right? It's a fish. If I look at the actual file size, it's about 10 megabytes. If I click on the preview, let me uh, zoom to fit. OK, there's the original. Now I'm on the preview. Over Zoom, you're not going to be able to tell the difference in these two devices. There's the preview. There's the original. This is part of the magic of Malio. In person, I have a big screen in front of me. And I can tell that the preview is a little bit softer. The eye is not as sharp. There's some details that are lost. But in most screens, like on your phone screen, and in more circ most circumstances, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between the preview and the original. But look at the file size difference. The original is 10 megabytes, whereas the preview, which is uh, also known as the optimized version, is only 500 kilobytes. It's about 5% the size, right? 
Uh, if I go to the thumbnail, the thumbnail is much smaller. And if I were to zoom in on that thumbnail and make it fit the screen, it's very pixelated, right? Uh, and that thumbnail is only 28 kilobytes. So what the sync panel tells you is for either your entire library or for a particular image, what version of the photo is present. So if I go right now, I have that, that uh giant teddy bears photo selected notice that at the top of the sync panel there's two areas there's library which is going to show me the sync status for my entire library or selection i have one photo selected so if i click on that now it's saying okay on my mac studio i have a thumbnail and i have the optimized version of that image backblaze has all three because backblaze is evolved so it's always going to have everything same with many media my ipad has the thumbnail and has a squiggly line for optimize that means that the optimized version is in the internal storage of my ipad but it doesn't have to be there so if malio needs space for something that's a photo that it might get rid of or a version of the photo it might get rid of in that device my motorola phone doesn't even have the thumbnail that's why it's orange so you you didn't change the sync, for instance, on the Mac Studio, you didn't change the sync from optimized to thumbnail. And that's no. why you have both. Uh, you have my, both? So on any on a particular device, like on my Mac Studio, you set up a sync policy and then you leave it alone. It's not something that you constantly have to change. It's just something that you do once. Uh, let me just give you an example, right? I'm gonna go ahead and take a photo with my phone. I'm gonna share my screen with my phone. Give me a second here. Oh, that's... You guys can still see my screen? Yep. Okay, so there's my phone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take a photo uh, with my phone. I have some friends here that keep me company, so we'll take a photo of them. Okay, I just took that photo on my phone. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Malio on my phone. And if I go to all my photos and I go to the newest photos, that photo is going to show up right there at the bottom. There it is. And if I go to Malio and I look at all my photos, that photo is also going to show up in Malio. There it is. When I select that photo, notice that that photo is now being synchronized to different devices. It already brought the thumbnail and the optimized version to my Mac Studio because the sync policy for the Mac Studio says I always want to have optimized. And it's progressive. You cannot have the optimized without the thumbnail. Ah, okay. But for Backblaze, it has all three because that's the policy. For main media, it's going to put all three as well. And notice it's orange, so there. The thumbnail on the is too fast. <laughs> okay, that explains why you had both thumbnail and optimized. I yeah, it's progressive. So in order to have the original, you also have to have the optimized and you also have to have the thumbnail. Ah, okay. Every device has to have at least the thumbnail. Thank you. Okay, that's a demo that I don't think we've ever done, Laurie, and it actually uh, helps un understand how the sync panel works. So yeah, that's great. I'm glad you asked that, Lou. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. We need more questions like that. <laughs> All right. Okay, Deb has a question. What if you don't have B2 in Black Backblaze? Will it still sync to Mylio? No. So the way Mylio works with uh, with certain cloud devices is uh, based on the protocol that those uh, services use. Um, the protocol that Backblaze B2 uses is S3. Um, is the same protocol that Amazon Web Services uses and uh, systems like Wasabi and all that. And all it means is that we know how it works. So we know it's not going to break anything if you add an S3 device. Um, so yeah, in order to use 
back place as a device in Malio, you have to use their B2 service because it uses the S3 protocol. Now in the future, we'll, we'll keep adding more services and having the traditional backblaze, which is more of a long-term storage, is cheaper, but it doesn't let you download things. It only lets you upload things uh, that will be available. But the advantage of B2 is that it functions as a cloud anywhere. So if I was walking around with my Motorola phone that only has thumbnails, but I had an internet connection, the moment I tap a photo, it's going to go, okay, what devices can I get a better version of this photo from? Uh, and if all of my computers were turned off and inaccessible, but it could see Backblaze, it would go and grab the optimized version from Backblaze. So that's the advantage of having uh, cloud storage. It's also advantageous because you have an offsite version of your photo, which is a good strategy for backing up, having an offsite version. What else do we have? Okay, John is getting an error. Uh, the Mileo catalog uh, for a USB, a vault needs to be repaired. But often when I click repair, it says it didn't need to repair it. Why? Yeah, yeah. Even if, even though it says it doesn't need to repair, you can click the button that says repair anyway. Now, John, something to look for, usually on an external drive, when you are, if you're constantly getting the catalog need to repair, that is a good indication that there's a potential hardware issue. Either that drive is having problems and, and might be about to fail or the connection, maybe the cable or, or the adapters that you have connected between the computer and the drive uh, are faulty. The catalog gets uh, corrupted if Malio is in the middle of writing something to the catalog. And really what's happening is, is writing something to the database, right? So let's say that I took this, this new photo here and I rotate it. Malio is gonna write that change to the database so that every other device in Malio knows that something was changed. Uh, if Malio is in the middle of writing a change to a device, like an external drive in this case, and that device disappears, the catalog, the, the writing that was happening, you know, it's like if somebody yanked a piece of paper that you're writing into <laughs> all of a sudden, right? You're going to have a, 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 an ugly line and or as much of ink. That's what happens when a device disappears. So if you're seeing this error constantly, take a look at that hard drive, maybe run this first day or some other uh, disk repair application, check the cable and make sure the cables are, are nice and tight because that's usually what causes those problems. But even if you see no problems or if it finds no errors, go ahead and repair it anyway, because what it'll do is it'll go and get the catalog from another device and it'll compare it against it. And then it'll go, oh yeah, there was something to repair. So, all right, any other oh, questions? I think Deb had one. Oh, Mark just popped in a question. He has a question regarding syncing. Oops. <clears throat> You see, let me let me give you a little more detail here. here okay, I'm, you've probably seen me in the community a little bit lately. I'm having a lot of trouble with duplicates, and I have literally thousands of them. I know they're. Okay. I can look at them. Um, I still have a lot of my stuff in Lightroom, just kind of in storage. I go there. I can physically look at them. They're the same size. They're the same type. Sometimes they're even even the same date and time stamp, but they're not exact duplicates. Obviously, something has changed over the years when I've moved things around. So right. it doesn't work. Similar is it, it's a great feature if you have a finite set of pictures you're looking at. If you got 136,000 of them, it, it's a handful to deal with. Yeah. It it it, it in in the new duping isn't ready yet. My question is, there's a, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a thing you can turn off in your device for syncing. If I use an external deduplicator like Xire or, or something similar, right? get them, physically delete them from my hard disk. How do I get Okay, first off, my local copy, which is a vault, mm -hmm. it, it's going to basically sync itself. Those pictures are gone. <laughs> now, right. how do I get that to sync up with all my other ones? 
Yeah. So there's there's two things that you're going to want to do. The first one is this setting called save delete, which is on by default. That's it. Yeah. What save delete does just for the benefit of everybody else is that uh, if if let's say you have multiple vaults, like I have three vaults. If I go outside of Malio and I delete a file from my vault and save delete is on, next time I run Malio, it's going to go, hey, that file is missing from that vault. <laughs> Let me go grab it from another vault and put it back where it's supposed to be. <laughs> right? So basically, it, it doesn't let you delete things um, outside of Malio. If you delete it from Malio, then it gets deleted. So you'll have to turn that off in order to run deduplication outside of Malio. The other thing that you are going to want to be cognizant of is that your deduplication software is going to remove the files, but it's likely not going to remove the XMPs or any other sidecar files like a display image or a MYB file. So you'll manually have to find those and remove them. <laughs> I think I'll keep them for a while. <laughs> totally it's not that hard. I've done it. I mean, all you have to do is is just sort by name and any XMPs that are alone. You can, I mean, you know how to program. You can do this with a command line pretty easily. Yeah, I think that's the better solution is just write a script to, yeah. to go through and find yeah. Find yeah, so so take all your take, you know, quit Malio on all of your devices. Don't have Malio running at all run the duplication with this third party tool, whichever one you choose. Um, once it purges files, maybe you can go to the trash and generate a list of file names and then run a script to delete the XMPs as well. That's a good idea. This is why we built our own internal tool because- I know. <laughs> it sounds simple, but it's not. No, I understand it's not, but but yeah. when you when you've got this many files that have been through multiple dams yeah. and finally yeah. settling here, yeah, uh, Edoop doesn't do it. Uh, similar is just too much to handle. <laughs> well, no, you yeah, because similar doesn't have like an auto auto check, so that's, yeah, you so still have like, to manually check a lot of files. Yeah, no, but it it will work. Just do it that way, and you know, yeah, so do one so folder at a time. So when I'm done. I, I turn safe delete back on and it'll synchronize my local vault with my other vaults. Um, well, don't take, don't turn safe delete on until all the vaults are synchronized, meaning the files have been deleted everywhere. So, so I need to do the same dedupe on each device then? No, 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 no. So if safe delete is off and you remove files from drive A, when you turn Malia back on, it'll go, oh, he deleted some drives, some files from drive A. He must want them deleted everywhere. Let me go find them and delete them. I get it. So I do turn it back on when I'm all done then. Correct. Okay. All right. I got it. Um, I, I know you're really not supposed to give answers like this, but with the amount of effort involved when I'm I'm probably exceeding 20 to 30,000 duplicates. Um, yeah with the amount of work involved to do this manually, well, sort of manually with an external tool, would it, I'd be better off just waiting until your enhanced duplicate finder comes out? That's a hard question. Um, I know it is because you can't give me a date, <laughs> but you know what I'm up against. <laughs> yeah, I can give you a date, but uh, <laughs> don't tell Rich I said this. I'll deny it. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't expect uh, uh, AI-based deduplication, meaning an image analysis deduplication tool to come out for at least six months. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I, I suggested using Exire. It's because I happen to have a license to it. I bought it back when I used it to generate keywords when I was in Lightroom. Yeah. Um, it, do you use it or do you recommend a different tool for external? Uh, I've used um, Photo Sweeper, actually. Oh, uh, okay. Photo Sweeper is, is, is a Mac only app. Um, it's fun. <laughs> um, but it's it has a lot of um, tweaking that you can do. 
Okay. Uh, and it helps, uh, it does respect certain metadata fields too. So nice. Uh, okay. Well, thank you very much. Look. It's you not expensive. What? It's I think it's ten dollars. No, it's a little bit off topic, but it does have to do with syncing. And I was this has really well, been removing great. duplicates does help with storage <laughs> quite a bit. So thank you. I appreciate it, JC. You're very welcome. All right. Yeah, I think we got most of the questions there. So oh, okay, because I was looking and I'm I can't keep track of who's yeah, I know. Who was, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see here. Just one last. Let's take this last question from John. Is there any issue changing the sync policy from Vault to Space Saver? Not as long as you have another vault. Uh, so as long as you have another device that's designated as a vault then no, that's exactly what Space Saver is, is meant to do. So go ahead and do it. Uh, I do see Michael's question about my all external hard drive ran out of space. How can I move Malia system folder from old to a new bigger hard drive on the same MacBook? Um, and the answer you gave, the link to, the, to moving the Malia system folder, that is true for the internal storage but it's not true for a vault. So I guess, Michael, my question is, this external drive that you're talking about, was that a, a drive? Yeah, uh, it's a vault, yeah. So it's an external vault. It's not, the, it's not that Malia thought this was your internal drive on your computer. This is an external vault. Correct. Okay, you do not want to move the, moving that folder to another drive it's not going to render the results you want. What you want to do is add the other drive. So if you bought a new drive, add that drive to Malio. Just go here and say, add external drive. It'll show up there and uh, let it synchronize uh, and let Malio do the copying because you want Malio to know that this is a new device and that that device is a different device than the device you're removing. So. Let Malia do the copy. It's going to be slightly slower than if you do a file system copy, but you'll get a much better result. And then once that's done, you just take the old device and you say unregister that device for Malia and you can reuse that drive for whatever you want. So don't move the Malia system folder on external drives that are provisioned. Meaning if it's a device that shows up in the Malia list here, you don't want to move the Malio system folder. Mo moving the Malio system folder is meant for uh, internal storage. Like for example, if you have a PC that has a C drive and the D drive, and the D drive is much larger, and you want the Malio system folder to not live in the C drive, but to live in the D drive, you use that process that Lori linked in the chat. But that is not to... Uh, that, that's not going to work with external provision drives. So just some clarification. Okay. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. All right. We have a minute JC, and three seconds. JC, can I ask you a question? It's Darren here. Oh, no. Sorry. Um, not you. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm oh. totally joking. Of course you can ask. Um, um, <laughs> How I, are you doing, man? I, uh, yeah, I was fine until I had a bit of a play. And... Um, Unfortunately, I've corrupted my uh, library catalog. Okay. Um, and I don't want to rebuild again, um, but am I able to get some interactive help desk support to explain it? Because it's to write it all out and send an email would be very difficult. Um, so, so give me the too long, didn't read version of what happened. Okay. Um, I, what I did was I mistakenly turned my one one drive into a vault realized okay. later stopped it it must have picked up an old catalog that i hadn't removed from previous ah, yes. rebuilds and now it's completely corrupted my two vaults um it says the files are missing and what have you and then i realized yeah so um i want to try and recover it without losing all the xmp data and so on today where you showed me those files with space saver that was very good, showing me where the XMP files. But I've also customized everything. You know, I've I've started tagging, I've started uh, rating, and I've started doing lots of other things. Right. I don't want to lose all that content because last time I rebuilt, I had to do it all again. Uh, was was OneDrive 
your only volt or did you have a local volt? No, no, I've got two six terabyte volts. Um, okay. But I just mistakenly read. The problem I had, and it was late at night, is that my OneDrive wasn't synchronizing and I couldn't figure out why. When I put <laughs> files into it, it wouldn't synchronize. Yeah. So I mistakenly read the read the article that said OneDrive, then uh, yeah, half asleep. I kind of turned it into a vault. I realized half an hour later, I'm thinking, what's going on? I didn't want to exhaust the limited memory that I, or the limited space that I had in my OneDrive, so I just removed yeah. it. And and by doing that, obviously, yeah, corruption. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. We can certainly help. Uh, we won't be able to help you in person until next week. Yeah, sure. Uh, but yeah, go ahead and send an email uh, in the subject line. Just just say 4JC. Sure, thank uh, you. And that will get routed to me. And then uh, on Monday, uh, I'll see who can be available. Uh, and Fantastic. Your, um, what you're in Australia, so you're 20 hours ahead in New Zealand. Yeah, New Zealand. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's coming up to it's now just gone seven o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning. Okay, so um, yeah, I think it's 18 hours or something. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Um, yeah, there's put, there's I'll, some I'll, things that we can do to help. Um, so thank, thank you. just send that in, put for JC in the subject line, uh, do it from the app so that we get logs. Sure. That way we can do some pre pre planning, um, and we'll we'll help you out. Are you able to remote into my Milio session? Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll 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 send you a link where you can schedule time with one of our techs, and we'll Fantastic. do that over Zoom. And then in Zoom, we're able to to control your computer. Oh, that's fantastic! Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. All right. Well, enjoy your Friday. I'm about to set off on my Saturday. So, well all right. Done. You you enjoy the weekend. Thank you. Bye bye now. Bye. All right. Uh, so we have two more questions. Yeah, let's uh, let's okay, answer them. I okay. don't want to leave every anybody hanging. Excellent. Okay, Deb is asking: When you get file system changes, is it best to click the X in the upper right corner or apply changes? Um, well, that depends on whether you want to apply the changes or not. Right. Uh, if you click the X, it's going to ignore them, but then next time you launch Mali, it's going to tell you again. Uh, if you click apply, it's going to apply. Them. So right. if you did something outside of Malio and you meant for that to be changed in Malio, then go ahead and click apply changes. Uh, in most cases, that's what you want to do. Keep in mind that depending on that save delete policy setting, uh, that uh, what what you did might get reverted. All right, and okay. you said we got another one? One more, Harold. Uh, the very last question, it's a little uh -huh. bit long. Do you want me to read it to you or do you want I to take it. a look? Your okay. main media is a full one. Oh, I see what you're saying. So when you have a link folder, that link folder becomes the repository for your original. So no, you would not have, uh, you would not have two copies of the photos of the originals. It's just Malio makes that link folder part of its library. So basically, Malio is going to say, "I'm responsible for washing all the folders inside the Malio folder plus these three folders that are over here." Um, so that's, that's how it works. So, so the link, a link folder becomes part of your Malio library. It's, it's something that Malio is going to be watching and, uh, it considers part of the library. It's just in a separate location because sometimes you don't want to move where the files are located. Like if you lose, you, you use Lightroom, for example, you want to link your folders because, uh, if you move them, uh, Lightroom won't be able to find them anymore. So, all right. I think we did okay. it. Okay. I think so. Good job, JC. I Thanks, everyone, for your helpful. questions. Yeah, lots of questions today. That's great. All right. Well, everybody, enjoy your weekend. Take lots of photos. Go share them in the community side. 
and we'll see you on the next one.